This is home video on the property of George Bender, one of Kane Booth's neighbours. Who the gas? It shows gas vapour, then water, bursting to the surface from deep underground on George's property. What's making it erupt is the force of methane gas escaping to the surface because of the mining activity. The methane is um, held in the coal seams by the water pressure. So releasing that pressure and removing the water allows that methane to free flow. It'll take the easiest route. Bingo. And this is... Helen Bender has taken on her father George's crusade. I think we're going to have a lift off. This one is getting worse. What did this farm mean to Dad? Oh, I'd actually have to say it'd be everything to him. I mean, I, that actually question gets me every time because he was married to the land more than what he was probably married to the family. The paddock we're in was George's favourite, his most fertile soil. But it also became his battlefield with another gas company, Origin Energy. We call them liars, cheats and thieves. Who the 68-year-old farmer blamed for contaminating his two bores, spewing vast volumes of methane. Both bores were at explosive levels of methane, yes. So they were dangerous. They were both dangerous. But the, the responsibility for that... ..is with Origin Energy to, to decommission and make good. And, and that's all George was trying to do. After 555 business days of negotiation of a make good agreement... Hang on, process, say that again, 555 days. Business days. Uh, 805 days. That's how long they took? To come to a, a, a signed agreement. And I think Dad signed in the end because he just got sick and tired of the, um, of the negotiation process. The refusal to fix the bores, George believed, was a tactic to wear him down and force him into selling. Eventually, Origin sent him a letter to buy the property. George had just 30 days to decide. The company just will not agree to any of our terms. They want everything done their way. You can only sort of take so much of this stuff. What was the final straw for Dad? Cumulatively, everything had its toll, but the final straw was Origin Energy forcing that sale of this one property. Mm. Um, yeah, it really came down to that, that letter, wanting to purchase it um, when it wasn't for sale. What did that mean to your dad? He really felt like he may have failed. So one morning, George rose at 6am like every other day. He set the table for breakfast and went to the shed to take his life. George didn't die straight away. It would have been a good 28 hours or so before he passed, so we all got a chance to see him. And he was, he was conscious and able to talk to you? Perfectly well. Absolutely. First thing he said to me was, I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have done it. Oh boy. My brain snapped. The thing that he can continue to repeat all morning, he kept on saying they just wouldn't leave me alone. And he was like, he was saying it with so much angst, like he knew they loud, like he knew that they got to him. One month after George Bender took his life, Origin Energy finally came to his farm, decommissioned those contaminated bores, and stopped the gas. I think it was just a logical step for him to take his life. Yep. Yeah, that, that's all he could see. Look, I think it probably was. He thought if he wasn't here, then all of this would go away. Yeah. <laughs> but it hasn't gone away, and now Helen fights to hold the gas companies to account. Despite her father's death, not everyone is rallying behind the Bender family. As we head up the Condamine River, we're being watched. Why would people be spying on us today? I don't know. I, don't know. I mean, it's a river. I wonder what's at the other end that they don't want us to see. What are they continuing to keep hiding? How are you? And is there any reason you're photographing us? 
makes you wonder why we're being watched here. That's the second or third time that people have turned up taking photographs of us. All we're doing here is crossing a part of the river. Why are they acting so suspiciously? Why are they so suspicious of anyone being on the river? You have to ask, what is the big secret? This is what makes some locals sensitive. Oh, they're just over there, see the little bubbles coming up? Bubbling methane gas on the Condamine River. You can hear them crackling to the surface. Mm. A natural and historical phenomenon, but the activity of which has radically increased with the rise in coal seam gas mining. Even Origin Energy admitted the increased methane activity in a conversation earlier this year. Like I'm talking to guys that have you know, swam in that river, learned to fish in, in a river at 80 years of age, who have never seen anything like it. No, the bubbles are, um, oh, as you know, they're, they're significantly stronger than, than anecdotal reports have passed. Origin has now placed caps like this one on the riverbed to capture the methane and pump it to a processing station at the top of the hill. How should the coal seam gas companies view your father's death? This is on their back. This is blood on their hands. But it's not just the industry, it's also the government, because they did nothing to help that. Nothing. It's exactly the same back at Kane Booth's property, where it appears George's death has finally bucked some politicians into action. Kane, there will be other people that'll step forward, you know. And, uh, and you know, nothing came out of the terrible Bender case. And, uh, you know, now's our chance to strike back. Bob and Robbie Catter, like Kane, aren't anti-gas, but say the industry's practices of riding roughshod over farmers should be front and centre in the election campaign. This is uh, environmental desecration at its worst. And they're organising a rally of affected farmers. Next thing you hear from us will be a, a public meeting um, to let, uh, to first gather up the troops to who else is affected by this and, and get a clear picture of what this means mm. and send that message loud and clear to the government because this is a problem for everyone. It's a start. The gas wells have changed the landscape and lives. Helen Bender worries her father's death was in vain, but she hopes George's legacy is a spotlight on the environmental consequences of coal seam gas extraction. And Kane never wants another life lost to the stress of the fight. He saw his wife, Sharon, come heartbreakingly close. It's just ripping, it's literally ripping us apart. Just ripping us apart. That's their way of pushing you into the corner. You know, they know. Sooner or later, this bloke's gonna get sick of this. I am sick of it, but I ain't running away from it. I'm too far in now, you know? So, Keep fighting. Keep fighting, eh? Yeah, definitely. It's definitely a battle for us fellas, you know, kids. So, on the dirt, outside their former family home, on land they own but can't farm, the lesson around the campfire tonight is for Kane's young sons, from a father who started from scratch and won't give up. You listen to your dad. No matter how big a battle it gets, you don't ever throw the towel in and give up, because I'm not giving up on this. I'm not going to let these people take this away from us for nothing. You take note, you always stand your ground. No, this one ain't over yet. No way in the world. 